Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, some of the food you can get on the uh, street level. Lots of places like this. A lot of them are a lot smaller than this. This is uh, pretty close to Carbone Market. Uh, Carbone Public Market. A huge, huge wholesale retail uh, public market. Uh, downtown Cebu City. And uh, here you got somebody loaded up. You can buy it. You can rent these guys with these carts to uh, pick up the stuff that you purchase and uh, cart it off to uh, wherever you need to take it. Take it to a taxi or a bus or whatever. You're not going to carry that much, probably. This is a very unique experience. I don't see too many foreigners uh, the many times that I've gone down there. So come along if you're up for it and I'll show you around the market a bit. Over the past year or so, uh, they had uh, they had guards, security at various entrances, and they were uh, they would only allow people in one entrance and out one the other side. Uh, so depending on what area you, you came from, uh, you might have to walk several blocks to get around to the entrance. Now, this is kind of the start to one of them. Several streets in here and lots of uh, vendors. There are changes taking place. There's a, a corporation, Megawide Corporation, that has come in and done a proposal and they've started work uh, on kind of remodeling, restructuring a lot of these areas. Uh, there are some of the vendors association who are protesting that, uh, but the, uh, the changes have started. I'll show you a little later. Um, building that they've started working on. They're, they're basically going to clean it up a little bit. Uh, hopefully they don't change the character uh, of the, uh, the these Filipino markets that much, but uh, they, they could do with some cleaning up. Put in um, uh, some sanitary facilities, whatever that means. Um, even set up a, a ferry service from, from this area over to Mactan. Uh, area, so they, I think they hope to make it more friendly to tourists. I mentioned in other videos that I have, uh, when I first came here in 2015, my first trip, I told people I want to go down to Carbone Market, and down to Cologne Street, downtown, and uh, many people told me, no sir, you, it's too dangerous down there, you don't want to go down there. And my understanding was that prior to, basically prior to 2015, going into 2015, that it was much more dangerous. And uh, the mayor uh, went back then, went, went about uh, putting more police uh, presence in the area. And uh, over time, boy, that looks like one heavy sack. I was tempted to uh, move that, but uh, Anyway, I suppose I could get a job down there. It'd be a good workout every day, huh? Another way they tried to control the number of people who would be here uh, during the, the crisis, they, um, they tried to go, certain barangays could come in certain days, and then they tried, I think the, the, the first letter of your last name, certain people uh, could come in certain days, uh, but, but they, cut off. Now here you see vehicles coming in and out. Uh, they they had reduced a lot of the traffic in here at one point in time. But uh, I will say that this is, I have been down here maybe a dozen times over the last six years. And uh, this is the least number of people that I have seen down here uh, of all of my trips down here. Usually a very, very busy place doesn't matter what time of the day I, I, I arrive. And here's a sign, Megawide Corporation, a big uh, construction company involved in uh, many projects around the Philippines, I believe. And they came and they did a unsolicited uh, proposal and it was approved by the city. Now usually proposals that uh, are not put up for um, bidding, usually there's they're supposed to be offered up for bidding. Somebody comes in with an unsolicited proposal, said we'd like to do that, they're supposed to put it out for bidding. And I think they did that, but it was very short notice, very little time for other people to study it and come up with another one. The, I believe one of the uh, vendor co-ops 
came up with a with their own in a short period of time, but their their complaint was we really didn't have enough time to put together a, a full proposal. And anyway, Mega White's proposal was approved. They're starting to go forward with that. And uh, I read just last few days that they're protesting again. They're trying to get it stopped. So we'll see what happens if, if it goes into the court system and it's delayed or uh, whether they would be able to continue working while it's in the court system. Don't know how it all operates here. But anyway, this is one of the uh, covered areas open the outside so it's always uh, a bit warm depending upon what season it is and these vendors they rent the different spaces and uh, the the produce comes in from all over the Philippines as well as uh, imported a lot of these people have imported things that are, are not grown in the Philippines and there are enclosed buildings uh, in areas with vendors in it there are these more open to the outdoors uh, type buildings. Um, I don't think any of the areas are air conditioned. Uh, on a hot day it can get a little warm if there's no breeze. Number of ways of transporting your goods if you buy it. Well first of all let me let me tell you why would you want to come down here? If you uh, are of uh, the mind to take that risk, small risk, and you know, pickpockets were bi were a big issue. I think way back when. And uh, I've had a couple of instances where people were getting a little too close to me, and I I just stepped off the side and let them pass. Uh, a couple teenagers on either side of me coming up, and and I wasn't comfortable with it, so I stepped out of the way and let them go. I've had uh, a lot of little kids down in some of these areas. I've had kid come up and and try to stick his hand in my pocket. And you just really need to be aware. You don't want to be wearing, uh, you know, jewelry or any. Be carry your your valuables in uh, someplace safe that they can't get at it easily. You know, there are there are security belts, there are security bags you can put underneath your clothing, or uh, a number of different ways of doing that. Anyway, why would you want to come down here? Uh, number one, the cultural experience. I, I found that uh, the people are very very friendly. Uh, many of them understand English and uh, can speak English. Um, the produce generally is some of the freshest that you can find. And generally it's lower priced as well. Um, I buy a lot of broccoli. And by buying a, a kilo of, bro of broccoli it pays for my taxi ride down and back. What I save versus going to the uh, the more expensive uh, market and it's generally, generally not 100% of the time, generally the freshest you can get because it comes from the farm to the market. Now a lot of the things that you find in the market too are seasonal and prices change so they're not always the same. So it's uh, one thing I've found sometimes the the biggest and the, the vendors that are nearest to the entrance gate, my experience, my observation has been they, they have been the most expensive. So I, I get a, a, I ask for the price there and I, I go further into the market and, and the price drops. Um, I have, you, you can negotiate. I, I have done just a little of that, but if, if I think the price is fair, it's not that important to me to save five pesos, ten pesos here and there. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to uh, pay for what I get, uh, knowing that it's, uh, having been here long enough, I pretty much know what the prices are uh, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, grocery stores. This is more of the meat market area with fish and uh, such. They're pretty much done by, I think it was early afternoon when I was down here. They're pretty much finished for the day, cleaning up. I believe this is pretty much a 24-hour uh, operation, and uh, you'll get trucks coming in all day with with produce and meat. And I think a lot of the a lot of the meat, the animals come in, uh, the fish and other animals come in very early in the morning when it's still dark out, and uh, they will be processed 
in uh, in these various uh, uh, I'm not sure what you call them cages or whatever the butcher shops within uh, this building they'll process it and they'll uh, sell the fresh meat they'll uh, turn some of it into sausages hot dogs all sorts of things so you can go in and and get the freshest of the fresh meat I have not been down here uh, it's been suggested that I go down here at uh, one two three o'clock in the morning and and uh, see what's going on and one day I will do that but I have not been uh, in the, in that in that time period would be an experience I am sure there are many uh, farming areas in in the hills and mountains around Cebu of Cebu Island uh, a lot of the produce will come from other islands so it, c it goes on to a truck on those islands and then goes on to a ferry and the truck lands here comes down and, and unloads at this market many of the smaller markets and and most of these towns have many smaller markets as well you'll find street markets that will will have a lot of what you need of course they come down here they buy it wholesale and get it delivered early in the morning or sometimes later in the e evening and uh, they've got to mark it up they got to make a profit but still I've got a I've got a, a small public market near me I can get many things that I want it's a little bit more expensive than going down here but it is very 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 convenient I've gotten to know some of the vendors in there know what products like broccoli some days they don't have broccoli or they might their delivery might come in at five in the afternoon so I've gotten to know little details like that and I found the vendors in uh, down here and in Cebu City and all the markets that I've been in. Most of them have been very honest and quoted me honest prices. Only a couple times in six years did I feel like uh, they were trying to give me the uh, the Kano price, the foreigner price. You know, mark it up because because I'm a foreigner. Only happened, and, and the same thing happens with with taxis. I find the taxis to be here very honest and. 99% uh, of the time they turn the meter on right away. Only two, three times I think uh, th that I've, I've had experiences with, with taxis here in Cebu City. Now Manila has some bad reputation for some of the taxis, but uh, anyway here in Cebu City uh, I've heard a few stories here too, but uh, where people charge them a flat rate from the airport to a hotel, you know, a thousand or 1500, where you should be able to go virtually any any place in the Cebu metropolitan area uh, for less than 500 pesos, um, which is uh, about 10 US dollars. Um, but my experience, like during Sinalog, if there's a big event in town, like the big Sinalog festival in January, I've had only a couple times, most of them just turn the, the meter on. But if they, before you get in, they roll the window down and ask you, where are you going? It means they want to quote you a flat fee and uh, maybe twice or three times more than what the uh, what the meter would read and uh, it's up to you at that point in time uh, whether you take the ride or not um, I, I did not uh, because uh, I like to walk and I can walk and wait for another taxi no big deal for me unless it's you know pouring down rain or something but uh, I will say that this is the, I've never seen so few people. There's always, uh, gosh, at least five times as many people as what, five or 10 times more people down here uh, in my experience. But uh, this is, we're still in crisis mode here in November, 2021. Anyway, I would suggest if you're coming down here and I very rarely have I seen a foreigner down here uh, part of that reason, I guess, people uh, discourage people from going out here, I guess. Um, now, one thing, this new development project, if it goes forward, uh, you know, they're planning on putting in some uh, more running water. I'm sure there's running water here. Uh, more wash type areas to wash your, well, I better quit talking and uh, bec because I don't really know what all the details are, but I know they're going to make it, kind of clean it up, 
uh, make it more sanitary, have uh, places to wash away the garbage, uh, places to dispose of garbage, get it transported out of here, that whole infrastructure uh, type system. You see more and more of these electric bicycles, ele electric uh, tricycles. And uh, I'm gonna talk to a guy here in just a second, let you uh, listen in about the cost of his tricycle and his little operation. He's uh, cross over here and uh, let you listen in here. Where are you going? I'm just walking, just. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How much? How much for? Fifty-seven. Uh, one round. Uh, no. How much to buy? Buy. Buy this. Buy fifty-seven thousand. Fifty-seven thousand. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you make uh, one thousand every day. Uh, maybe. 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 Okay. Very good. How much? How much a ride? Uh, two pesos. One person minimum. Yeah. Then in uh, twenty, twenty, thirty pesos, something like that. Uh, yeah. Okay. In very good. Very far, 100. Okay, very good. Thanks. The guy standing there kind of smiled at me when he said uh, 100. Like, uh, no f f Filipinos aren't going to pay 100. Uh, I would, you know, if I was going uh, longer distance, I would, I would pay 100 pesos, two U.S. dollars. Uh, doesn't bother me. The guy shaving there. I was going to, I was going to ask him if he could trim up. Uh, Give me a shave there too, but he was just doing his personal thing there. Anyway, you've got, one thing you'll find if you're a foreigner here, you've got all kinds of new choices of fruits and vegetables. And, uh, you know, when I start going into the grocery stores, it's like, oh, I'd ask, and I, I got a lot of help from other customers, Filipino customers. What's this? You know, what is this? And, well, what do I do with it? How do I cook it? Do I eat it raw? What do I do with it? And uh, they're, very friendly Filipinos. Uh, the the biggest asset the Philippines has is the the friendly people and English speaking in many cases, and that's why they are they are desired for jobs all over the world. Um, the OFWs they've got uh, I think about almost 10 million OFWs overseas. Uh, they make a lot more money overseas. Nurses, teachers. Uh, people on ships, people in the airline industry, travel industry, hospitality industry. And I think I read that Germany wants like 10,000 Philippine nurses. So China wants uh, 10,000, 20,000 Philippine uh, teachers, something like that. So they are they're desired all over the world. If you're coming down here to shop, I suggest you bring a good sturdy bag if you're going to get very much at all. They all have plastic bags to put their product in, but uh, if you get very much, uh, and, and they're relatively sturdy. They're not uh, too flimsy, and uh, I've never had one rip open on me, but it's best to have another bag to put it in. Uh, if you're getting a lot, you can hire one of these guys to, if, you, if you've got a vehicle parked outside the area. Uh, to push it out. I've seen these guys over a kilometer away from here. I don't know, some some store or other market, uh, and they're, they're pushing a load of stuff. That is hard work. They also have uh, regular tricycle drivers. They've got these uh, pedicabs, what they call trisicad drivers, uh, the, the bicycle with the sidecar, trisicads. And so you can hire any of them just to take you around the market. And they're allowed on certain streets, but they're not supposed to be on the major streets. And they get caught on some of the major streets. Uh, they, their unit can get confiscated. They got to pay the fine uh, before they get it back. So don't want to get them in trouble there. There are jeepneys that roll through here regularly uh, that you could get on, get a ride. Uh, there are taxis that uh, run through here regularly so you might be able to grab a taxi uh, we've got grab car here now so if you got a grab app on your phone you could order a grab a grab car down in there or you can uh, if you get out to the to the edge of the market you can much easier to get a cab there I think this is yeah there was a cab there drop somebody off or bringing somebody in it amazes me how the system works 
uh, with the with the farmers and and the merchants down here, the vendors, uh, the transportation, the truckers, how they how they. Uh, just the logistics of getting everything in here, getting it here uh, on time, uh, putting it out for display, uh, storing it, all the logistics involved in running a market. One thing I'll point out, there are some larger taxis like this one here, more of a, uh, what you call that, almost like a little minivan or something uh, with more seating if you've got uh, more people with you or you're picking up more items. And uh, the taxi companies had a had an app, I think Me Taxi, Me Cab, something like that. And they had a, a screen inside, it's similar, kind of similar to Grab where you could call and, and book a cab, but uh, a lot of the taxi drivers said no, it cost them 80 pesos for the load, for the cell load to get to be able to use it every day and a lot of times their rides would be quite a long distance from where they were, so a lot of them were not using it. It's a very busy place and uh, yeah, if you if you come down you might want to bring a, an umbrella to give yourself some shade and uh, rains can come up somewhat quickly. You know, we're in our drier uh, northeast winds now. This is the, uh, usually the tourist season, the Christmas season, November, December, January, February, maybe even into March where you got the cold uh, climates, winter climates uh, in the northern hemisphere. But uh, virtually, well, no tourists at this point in time. So this this Christmas season, I was in the mall, a couple of malls in the in the last week, and they're still uh, still like ghost towns. Very little, very little Christmas shopping going on this year, I'm afraid, with the economy uh, pretty much in shambles, uh, with all the, the economic lockdowns for what 19 months now. Anyway, these guys work. They work hard. They work very hard, very dedicated. Filipinos have a, have a great worth work ethic, most of them. Anyway, um, there is some parking down here. There's parking out on the street, some of the streets. You, some areas you might have to pay a, a, a small amount. I know I think motorbikes, there was an area for parking motorbikes. They, 20 pesos for five hours. 40 US cents for five hours. Um, there is a parking lot just down a little ways from where I'm at, just walking down this way. Um, I'm pretty sure that they charge a little bit as well. Not quite sure, it's not, not very much, so. A lot of vehicles coming in and out, so watch, uh, don't, don't make any sudden changes in direction if you're walking, <laughs> walking through the street, and that's, that's what you have to walk on here. Uh, pretty much. This area, Carbon Public Market, is very close to the downtown area, very close to um, the Pier 1, not very far from Pier 1, uh, not very far from uh, Independencia, Independencia uh, Park, Plaza, uh, very close to downtown, Magellan's Cross, uh, you've got another uh, number of historical buildings down there. You can, I'm not sure at the present time whether uh, they're running the various tours, uh, but you can, you can rent a tour and go around to various historical sites, those sorts of things if you're interested. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Uh, I would recommend a trip down here at some point in time if you're brave enough. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.